to slow down or do something we have very less things in control but we know all that god is in control so uh, we are hoping that everything would go smoothly in this 15 minute session uh, also um, uh, we will try to turn on the video, video as soon as as uh, we finish this thing, I just didn't want to take the risk of testing it and breaking this connection. We had some initial problem in connection, so uh, I thought of uh, not turning on the video. So let's turn our Bibles to uh, Psalms 38. Psalms 38. Uh, for the sake of time, I will read it quickly and we'll meditate upon this word. Um, Psalms 38. If you have Bibles, uh, open it to Psalms 38 is the psalm of david and i'm gonna read it now lord do not rebuke me in your anger arrows have pierced me and your hand has come down on me because of your wrath there is no health in my body there is no soundness in my bones because of my sin my guilt has overwhelmed me like a burden too heavy to bear. My wounds fester and are loathsome because of my sinful folly. I am bowed down and brought very low. All day long I go out mourning. My back is filled with searing pain. There is no health in my body. I am feeble and utterly crushed. I groan in anguish of heart. All my longings lie open before you, Lord. My sign is not hidden from you. My heart pounds, my strength fails me. Even the light has gone from my eyes. My friends and companions avoid me because of my wounds. My neighbors stay far away. Those who want to kill me set their traps. Those who would harm me talk of my ruin. All day long they scheme and lie. I am like the deaf who cannot hear, like the mute who cannot speak. I have become like the one who does not hear whose mouth can offer no reply. Lord, I wait for you. You will answer, Lord, my God. For I said, do not me when my feet slip. For I am about to fall and my pain is ever with me. I confess my iniquity. I am troubled by my sin. Many have become my enemies without cause. Those who hate me without reason are numerous. Those who repay my good with evil lodge accusation against me, though I seek only to do what is good. Lord, do not forsake me. Do not be far from me, my God. Come quickly to help me my Lord and my Savior. This is the Psalms of David. Um, and uh, this can be concisely put into two verses. The first verse, which is a petition, and the last word, verse, which is the confidence that the petition would be accepted by the Lord. And the first word says, Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. So it's very clear. David understands that the Lord has to be with him and the Lord is going to discipline him through the time. And what is David requesting the Lord through all this request stay with him through all this trouble through all this pain asking the lord to stay with him so before we reflect upon the verses 2 to through 21 all the prayers uh, uh, and all the painful petition which uh, david is making 
he, he's crying out to Lord and saying, Lord, I have pain. Lord, all my friends have gone against me. Lord, people are trying to kill me, everything. But repeatedly, he's also making a, 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 a claim or, or, or he, he's telling this fact that it is my sin. And verse 3 says, because of my sins, and again, verse 6 says, because of my sinful folly. And again, verse 18 says, I'm troubled by my sin. So we, uh, we, we do not claim ourselves as sinners, but we know that in human flesh, we still could sin. And whenever we sin, there is a consequence. And David is giving the authority to Lord to correct him and to bring him to the right path whenever he, he sins. And he knows that his pain that he is suffering is because of the sin and God is trying to discipline him. Let's reflect a little bit on David. Who is David? We all know like at the age of 15 or something when he was a small boy, he went out and killed Goliath, right? And even before that, when he was going down to the, to the battle, uh, Saul uh, had apprehensions like whether this boy is going to do, could, would be able to do anything. Uh, and, and when he was fighting Goliath, uh, what did he say? David said that, that it's not me who is going to fight but he has faith in the Lord who is going to fight for him. So David was so confident. If we are in a situation where we are in troubled waters, where we have to face a situation, let's say a life and death situation, at that point, do we have that kind of faith in our Lord? That kind of faith David had in his Lord. So David knew the Lord and Lord knew David. Remember that David knew Lord very well as a father. And the Lord also knew David. And that's why it's written, David was a man after God's own heart. So also what we see through is, through life of David, he had pain, right? It was not a smooth uh, transition for him or it was not a smooth path for him. He was uh, running away from Saul, even though he would be in the palace eating with the king, still he has to step out. Uh, many a time Saul attacked him, thrown his javel aiming at him and tried to pin him to the walls many times. And he has to run away from the front of the south of his life before he became king. He, even though he has proven to the king Saul his faithfulness, yet he has to run away for his life. And he has to, he has to, uh, he has to take up all those pain and all those uh, troubles, even though he did not deserve those things. So we see that that David was a man who was in God's own heart, yet he has to face the troubles. Why? Why he has to face those troubles? Why? He was a powerful king. He was a, he, he was a, a powerful warrior everything but still he has to he, he has to face the troubles worldly troubles exactly as what we as human today face worldly troubles and when we have those worldly troubles where do we turn our face to and we clearly see in this psalms where david is turning his face to David knew that he is a sinner and we, we know that uh, through scriptures that he has sinned, yet he knows that his salvation comes from the Lord. So the last verse says, my Lord and my Savior. 
so david knew that the lord is his savior no one else can save him but the lord alone can save him so reflecting back once again that david had weakness david has pain in his life david knew his god god knew him and what we learn from this is today as humans as man even though we have the promise in our lord jesus christ yet our humanly flesh yet in our humanly flesh we might sin we may sin and we will sin and we need to turn back to lord as a father and like a father he is going to forgive us our sins so uh, nehemiah 9:17 says the lord is merciful and gracious slow to anger slow to anger and plenteous in mercy so our lord is slow to anger and he is so gracious he is he he is very, i cannot even believe that when the israelites went back and made the golden calf and prayed to that golden calf when jesus when god has rescued them out of egypt and and i don't think any one of us can think about that 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 situation where where god has brought us out from the pit that there cannot be a situation where where it could be worse than that god has brought us out from that pit and in today us out from our sinful nature from our sinful past and saved us and how can we go back to that golden calf that's what is god is saying is israelites went back to that golden calf and still and yet god is slow to anger god is gracious god is merciful he is not going to keep his anger forever he is going to forgive and he is going to take away that so the first verse verse says that lord discipline me lord discipline me so we have to cry out lord discipline me and we have heard from preachers Uh, that uh, we have to go to god and tell that we are we we cannot do it with our strength like david is crying out over here in my life i have all these struggles in my life i have all this uh, uh, stress in my life all this uh, um, uh, distress in my life so but i am not going anywhere else this is not a guilt conscious this is going back to a father and telling father i have this sin i have committed this thing and you are my father whom i give the authority to discipline me so as i am pretty confident and and through my life also i know that everyone born on this earth including youth including young people everyone has pain in their life whether it was going to school uh, meeting up with the test and temptations the struggles whether it's work pressure every every moment whether it's family pressure every moment we are under struggle but when we have to cry out to the lord and say that we are in stress we are we 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 have this enormous burden on us he to discipline us god we give you the authority to bring us out from our sinful nature and place us in a position where we can glorify by you and we can give you thanks and that you are our savior and you are our god who can oh, who is only able to save us there is no one else who can save us so has uh, been refining david through the different situations when the struggle is there in our life what we shaking us through all those troubled waters because he is refining us so we cannot we we cannot um 
think that as a believer, as a saved person, our life is going to be smooth. No, 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 that's not going to happen. We have to walk through the difficult valleys. We have to have to we have to uh, face those situations of the life, whether young, child, mid age, old, anyone, everyone, including everyone has to face the situation of the, the life. And what should be our response? The response should be like what David has said over here, Lord, come quickly to help me. Lord, come quickly to help me for you are my Lord and you are my Savior. David with confidence says, Lord, I wait for you. You will answer. It's not that, that he's, he's, he's putting some kind of a doubt in verse. And he says, you will answer. So that should be our response today, brothers and sisters. We have to be confident in our Lord that he is going to respond. He is going to answer to our prayers. Be confident in our God like David was. Face the world with full courage like David did. Build your confidence on none other than the God, because he is the only savior. And make sure that our Lord is our father and give him that authority to discipline you. So God is the loving father at this rebuke you. Remember the word chasten, and and uh, it has been taught to me also as uh, through by elders. Like God chastens you, but it's like a father who disciplines his children, because the father wants to see his child in a good place, not because his father rejoices in punishing his children because his father knows that if the child continues in the path of destruction he will lose his life so they give the authority to the father to discipline and cry out to him to give you the strength to walk through this journey on this earth with that i will stop over here and i'll quickly Pray that these words settle in our hearts and bring forth fruits. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you, Lord, for giving us this, these words this morning, Lord. You have taught us, Lord, to be faithful unto you, Lord. You have taught us, Lord, to cry out unto you, Lord. You have taught us, Lord, to, to walk through the valley of shadow, through all the temptations, through all the pain, through all the struggle, through all the distress, through all the stress of this world. And we know that our confidence is in none other than you alone. Like David cries out and says, Lord, I pray to you and have the confidence that he is going to answer to all our prayers. Call out to him and say that, come quickly for help and have the confidence that he is a savior and he will come to help us. Thanks, Lord. Be with us, Lord, through the rest of this session and guide us and teach us. We ask this through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.